Hello, welcome to our second loopback maintainers call. And uh, as usually, I would like to start with a bit of icebreaking discussion, just to have uh, give us an opportunity to learn more about each other. And last time, uh, Dominic mentioned that uh, it was about the coronavirus situation and how coping with it. Oh. Talk about that a bit. I propose this topic. Can you start? Gonna start. Sorry, I'm Dumb. Sorry. Oh, me. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. Your ideas. <laughs> we'll do. We'll do. So yeah, we're pretty much staying indoors. Uh, my wife and I are getting the groceries. We're letting our two girls in university just stay inside the house until they finish this semester, just to be safe. Uh, but one hack that I made, like a home hack, is um, I go out and everywhere I go, everyone wants you to use self checkout, but I don't want to touch the screens right uh, i have a pen for i use the pen for punching in the numbers but i have nothing for computer screens so i was like trying to order it but some places were sold out so then i on youtube i saw some guy that says oh an engineer how can we engineer uh, a stylus for computer screens at home and he went through different things like a pencil with a thumbtack or a toothbrush just wrapped in aluminum foil he tried different things and the Aluminum foil thing works. So I, I go out with a pen. It's got aluminum foil, like kind of wrapped tightly around it, and I could touch the screens at uh, you know the drugstore, the grocery store, and it recognizes my touch, right? Uh, yeah. So that's my home hack for uh, uh, computer stylus. <laughs> hey Tom, you should have uh, a golden finger. Golden finger. A tool or <laughs> remember this uh uh double seven movie i think uh, yeah yeah gold figure that's right he was a bad guy or something right <laughs> yeah so that's that's my uh home uh, hack uh for computer stylus right so he even works on ipads too, so. <laughs> can you go next please Okay, I'll go next. Um, uh, here in India, the lockdown has been extended till May 3rd. And uh, groceries are available, so not much of a problem. Except, uh, we cannot uh, go to the usual places. It's a new normal. Uh, <laughs> next in our country. Uh, the restrictions are being slowly lifted off, but it's kind of very messy and chaotic. Our government doesn't really have any proper plan. And most recently, it's actually like a two days thing, uh, the court decided that the, the lockdown was against the law. So the government has three days to reintroduce the lockdown in a lawful way. So it's kind of funny. not funny. But other than that, life is it's okay here we can do grocery shopping just wearing a mask uh, or we can order online yeah and, uh, kids are at home so all of them are suddenly homeschoolers it's kind of funny because for a long time it was like no 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 kids has to go to school they must be uh, uh, taught by proper uh, teachers you cannot uh, do homeschooling because then they will be, I don't know, dumb or whatever. And suddenly everybody is a homeschooler and it's not a problem. <laughs> so it's kind of ironic. And as for life hacks, I probably don't have any because I was as a remote worker, like not that much changed for me. I keep working from home as before. So not many hacks really. Want to go next? Any volunteers? Uh, I can go next. So, here's my observations of the new life, at least speaking for myself. Uh, number one thing is I'm working much longer hours than before, uh, even for weekends, uh, because when you stay at home, there's not much fun you can do. I just keep working like. Uh, extra hours after work or even during the weekend so the productivity is improving 
<laughs> so that's a positive side. And, uh, secondly, uh, I'm a little bit jealous about Miyasov and Matt. Uh, you can show your, you know, video because I don't really want to show my video. My hair is growing like crazy, so <laughs> I don't know how to tell. <laughs> it looks like, but anyway, the much longer time ahead of me, so I'm not sure where I'm gonna have the haircut next time. So we bought uh, like a small machine to do our haircutting at home. That helped a lot. Uh, yeah, but. <laughs> Uh, we'll see, like, uh, if we know we are going to be in the lockdown mode for like two more months, I don't care, I guess. Just <laughs> cut one of those things, right? <laughs> but anyway, that's um, an interesting side. The other good news is uh, I'm doing more exercises uh, at home, so I'm losing quite a bit of weight. So that's uh, a good uh, something that you, we, we can always stay positive um, and try to do things you can do at home. And, you know, help yourself or help the society. Right, that's a good reminder. Thanks, Raymond. So maybe, Matt, can you go next? <laughs> Hello, everybody. Uh, last time I saw you, I had a, uh, a full head of hair and a two-year-old beard. Um, as you can see, no hair. And I shaved my face, but the beard's coming back in really fast. Um, the company I work for is officially closed uh, and we're all working from home at least until July 1st. So you probably know that Los Angeles is um, not necessarily a hotbed for the outbreak, but um, the city locked down very quickly uh, and doesn't appear to have any plans to start reopening yet. Um, about 60% of the city is unemployed at the moment. So I'm very lucky to still be working. Uh, I don't have any life hacks because just like uh, Raymond, um, I'm also working a lot more. I wouldn't say I'm more productive. Uh, the company I'm working for, we're trying to find the balance between too few meetings and too many meetings. Um, my schedule a couple weeks ago was gnarly. I didn't, I didn't have any free time. I didn't get any work done. It was just too many meetings. But this week, I only have meetings on. I only had meetings on Tuesday, so I think we found the balance. So yeah, unfortunately, no other life hacks. I need to take Raymond's advice here and follow his example and make some room and start working out at home. Otherwise, I'm going to gain 15 pounds. That's it. I got nothing else. I think we're all in that boat, uh, Max. <laughs> Can you perhaps Matt, pick the next, per next person, please, to go after you? Um, let me take a look at the list here. Um, have we heard from Diana yet? I'm sorry that I joined late. <laughs> um, so about the life hacks for this lockdown. How do you cope with the uh, coronavirus and the current oh, situation? Okay. Uh, so I, I find out that I cook a lot more, um, because I cannot go out for a restaurant or buy things or take some food from my parents or emails. Um, and. I, at some point, I got very tired from cooking all the time, and so there's one day that I try. Um, there's no, pretty much no cooking. One is like in the morning we have, well, for lunch we have the frozen pieces, just put it in the oven, and in for dinner we have sandwich. So it's like a, a good break, a cooking break for me. <laughs> Yeah, Diana really cooking is fun. Like uh, my wife spent a long time baking um, fresh breads, uh, cheesecakes, uh, you know, all kind of. Uh, since uh, she knows from the uh, food channels uh, videos, so it's uh, pretty nice. <laughs> yeah, cooking those like special things is nice. But, um... Regular cooking is not that nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun for me as well. Yeah, yeah, if I had yeah. to cook every day, it would be like just a core. <laughs> yeah. So one thing being alloyed is like our garbage can, it's being filled up like a halfway of the week. So <laughs> it's pretty ridiculous, like how we have to compact the, the trash can. <laughs> Pick the next person, please, to speak. Maybe there's a quick contact. I, 
don't know who hasn't got. Uh, oh, I saw Mario. Is it? Has Mario talked yet? Or... Yeah, he's on. Okay. Yes. Hi. <laughs> So your turn, Mario. Hi, one, two, three. Do you hear me? Yes, we do. Uh, how are you guys? Uh, I, I couldn't make it in this meeting. I couldn't in the last one, but it's, it's good to see you all. Um, I am from Guatemala. Uh, I started in the States, but then I moved back here uh, five years ago, back to, to Guatemala, the, the place I was born. Um, uh, Basically, uh, what, what we do is uh, we do a lot of software in terms of business intelligence and, and artificial intelligence. That is our main expertise. Uh, in the last couple of three years, we moved to develop a banking application. It's a core banking, but it's also the online banking and the mobile banking uh, for a bank in the Caribbean. That's where I step in in the loop back. Um, I, was, uh, I was very glad that I picked this project. Uh, we could develop uh, finally the the application uh, it has it has launched uh, uh, four months ago still we were, we were tweaking certain things you know how it goes when it goes to production everything is kind of like a different uh, but <clears throat> we we are very pleased we are very pleased with the performance um, we uh, were using uh, because the bank is very small it's not really a, a quite large bank uh, we are using uh, PM2 as as the as the manager for the processes. Uh, we have PM also. It connects pretty well uh, to a core banking called Finastra for now. Uh, they are exposing SOAP XML web services. Uh, Does the integration with Loopback was very very well defined, and we have an online banking and a mobile banking that connects to Loopback. And the response uh, actually is is very nice because. Uh, before that, uh, the framework uh, was running with PHP, the, the framework in the, in the middleware that connects to Finastra, the, using IBM MQ also, uh, or IBM Money or something like that. And, and then um, we basically in the response, we are taking like, it is like 80% uh, uh, faster. It's incredible. It is very fast. Uh, the account summary release is very fast and it's, it's managed pretty well with Blueback. Um, I will I will send you a video. Um, I, I created a, a little mock-up um, for a for a, a, a test that that we did. Um, it's not the bank, of course. The application was running for, but it 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 can it can give you an idea of the user interface and and how this thing can work with Loopback. I don't. I'm not sure if if I can if I can send you the link to this web chat or something. Well, maybe you can post it uh, to the Slack channel. Okay, yes, exactly. Okay, I, I can do that. I can do that. Um, sure. And then, and, and then uh, uh, lately, uh, after that, um, we uh, were doing uh, something else also in the bank. Now we are going to be integrating uh, an assistant, uh, which is something that will connect the uh, with Watson services, but um, the the assistant will connect to Lookback because that is where our authentication and, and the management uh, of the tokens and everything is getting place, and it will connect uh, to the assistant so that people uh, through the WhatsApp can actually inte integrate with the banks to pay services and inquire balances, more or less moving the SMS banking to the WhatsApp, right? Uh, but at that point, I'm, I'm going to take the opportunity to, to move it um, to, to Watson and Lubak also. And I, I, have been, uh, I, I haven't had any much time to actually uh, participate in the, in the source code uh, for Lubak, but uh, probably in the, ne in the next month, I'm going to be more available because, you know, this, this rolling out to production was very, has, very hard for us uh, in time. Now, uh, I don't know if that was the dynamic, but I, I, start, I start talking about this project, right? <laughs> uh, this is your first time here? So we, yeah, work. exactly. I just wanted to uh, cover that. Uh, Guatemala is, is basically located in Central America. Uh, we are nearby Mexico, right? We, uh, we are an independent country from Mexico, of course. Uh, 
we had a diverse culture. So we have a Caribbean, we have the, um, uh, like 20, 24 uh, uh, different in, in, in different tribes, different ethnics, right? Languages. And, but we also have um, the city, which is uh, the, the central area. This is a modern city, but we also have a Caribbean and indigenous uh, villages also, right? Um, so we have diverse food. So we have all the things that you were speaking before. Chinese food, of course, is, is, is really good here, uh, everywhere. Uh, we have the Caribbean soup. Uh, the main dishes in the Caribbean is something that is basically is fish with coconut and, and rice, kind of like a soup. Um, and uh, all these spicy things are, are very, because the country is very diverse. It's, it's, it's very diverse. Right? You move, for example, 200 kilometers from one place to another, you are in a different country, really. That, that, is, that is my country. And right now, um, we are uh, planning, uh, uh, we, we have been planning for more or less like a seven months ago, um, a project that, that will help uh, these remote communities to get help. Uh, we call it Dr. Henry, it's really, this is really uh, uh, something very uh, private right now, but it's called Dr. Henry. And this is an application that is, is basically um, to keep track of all these patients that need to actually put like health pressure, uh, the diabetes uh, uh, people that are sick, for example, they need to put in some metrics. Uh, the metrics will be received by Lubac also. Uh, it's gonna be a store um, in, in, the, in, the, in the IBM uh, cloud database also. Uh, but in the, in, the, in the client side, we are using Flutter uh, to build the, the mobile application, but it will help it will help uh, basically doctors that have just recently graduated to register in the platform and to actually give remote help to uh, very poor communities that probably uh, they just have uh, a, a, a phone, for example, they have internet access right now, but doctors cannot go there, for example. So, and, and this is gonna be powered by Lookback also in the, in the back end. That is the project, one of the projects that more or less is, is being started and it's called Dr. Henry. And, and that is where we are, right? We are very happy. Uh, this look back thing was very new for me for the last two years. Uh, I learned a lot from Bastos, from, from Raymond, uh, believe me, right? I, I learned a lot here. Uh, but now I can see, for example, how I can build things without look back in terms of integration because I can talk to web services, I can talk to databases. And this can give me the centralized uh, platform that we need. Right? That, that's it. <laughs> that's very cool. And uh, it's glad to see like Lubac being adopted for real life. And also, I'm seeing Lubac being used by the medical uh, area quite a bit. Um, so, for instance, my, another community um, like uh, SourceFuse, uh, it's a startup company uh, in the United States. So they're using Loopback uh, as the infrastructure to build microservices to enable their um, medical, like healthcare applications that connect the, the patients, doctors, uh, medicines, all together. So it's a very similar uh, use case you guys have, and hopefully um, you guys will have great success. And uh, SourceFuse right. is also talking about to open source some of the components they have. Uh, which uh, can serve as an extension to the core framework. Uh, so we are working closely with them. Uh, of course, like they have their priority on the application side. So uh, it will take a little bit of time to get some, um, you know, useful features from them to the open source community as well. It sounds very good, interesting. Can you, Mario, pick the next, uh, pick the next person, please? Right. Um, I think Deepak, Jenny, Agnes, and Rifa are remaining. Okay, Deepak, will you join us? Hey. <laughs> hey, Deepak. Hey, so, how do you cope with uh, coronavirus and everything around? I'm in the Bay Area. I'm pretty much facing the same, like, 
uh, you know myself Raymond we are in the same situation here <laughs> so um so uh, if you look at the bay area right it's a group of small small very small downtowns so we are kind of able to manage until now um, the grocery there is a grocery nearby it's open there are a few groceries open nearby we have to stand in the queue outside right like uh, but because the weather here is not that cold um, we are able to stand outside wait so for instance costco if you want to enter costco you have to be waiting at least one hour about one to two hours wow. outside so they leave i think i'm not sure how many people are allowed inside i think about 10 to 20 people are allowed at a time and then they shut down they kind of close and then leave another 20 inside something like that so it takes a longer time to buy things um, you know so but, but the, um, i used to eat um, the midnight cereals i take a bowl and have cereals and i eat in the night now i am reducing it a lot because i, I don't want to stand in costco for that long <laughs> So, I mean, those are the like challenges. There is no real challenge here um, as such. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm glad you you are doing well. Can yeah. you next, next person, please? Can you pick the next person, please? Oh yeah, sure. Um, who, who is still let to go? Uh, how about Tom? Dom. So Agnes, Jenny, or Rifa? Those are oh, names. Agnes, Jenny, or Rifa. Uh, Agnes. Okay. Um. Hi, everyone. Um. Yeah. So same as the part, like I go to Costco usually, and now it takes me like an hour to get in. So yeah, and I don't have any life hacks. I like same as Raymond. I really want to get a haircut. Like it's really long and messy, as you can see here. <laughs> Yeah, and that's all I want to share. And I will pick Jenny for next. Sure. Thank you. We cannot hear you well. Could you please uh, tune your microphone settings? Oh, sure. Uh, can you hear me now? Better. Thank you. Oh, nice. So yeah, I'm also from the uh, Toronto team. So uh, same as my team members, I stayed at home uh, these days. And um, yeah, I um, I think I just um, go for grocery once a week. Um, so last week I, uh, uh, I did grocery twice because um, I had a power outage um, in some days morning and so that I don't have um, any network and I cannot um, work or um, do other stuff. There's no power, no light. So I uh, went to um, a grocery store and something uh, surprised me is um, actually uh, I found that during the daytime there are more people <laughs> than, um, than at night. Uh, it's very interesting. <laughs> Um, I don't know why, but like <clears throat> this week when I went there uh, during the daytime, there were many people there. And, um, so um, actually, I have some uh, travel plans this year, but given this situation, I don't think I can make any of them happen. So instead, I found some uh, touring videos on YouTube that's talking about the cultures and um, visitors and sharing the experience um, in different cities um, across different countries. Um, I, I think that pretty uh, relaxing and just keep, have, uh, keep you to have a happy mood. Um, and uh, another uh, good thing I, um, I could feel recently is because uh, I don't have that many social activities anymore. So I, I found that I have more time spending on uh, reading books and like watching those uh, movies or videos. And yeah, that's um, something good in, <laughs> in this um, um, hard, in this hard time. I, I hope that could also um how others feel better and especially i think today is the 
uh, workbook day. Um, I I think yeah, in English it's called a uh, workbook day. Like there are many uh, books on sale online. If you also like reading, maybe you can <laughs> do some uh, grocery for books. Um, yeah, that's uh, everything from me. That's a good tip. I, I remember we received like a coupon to get a small discount. We're buying books in around the day of the World Book Day. But then I forgot about it, so maybe yeah, I should it, look it up. It, <laughs> it, what books do you recommend? <laughs> um, I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> Actually, I read those um, books in Chinese mostly, but um, I, don't, I don't know their English names. And, but yeah, <laughs> I will post in China if I find any interesting ones. Good. Thank you. Um, I think next is um, uh, Rafa. Did I pronounce it uh, correctly? Yeah, I think I am the last one to speak. Uh, hi there. Sorry for joining a bit late just now, but um, yeah. So with all the coronavirus happening, especially in Singapore, um, I don't know if you've read the news about them about Singapore lately. The cases have just shot up tremendously over the past few weeks. In quite a few thousand already, but uh, actually, for the most part, I've already been working remotely for my work. So actually, uh, not much has actually changed for me, other than you know reduced traveling, which gave me a lot more free time to uh, do other stuff like reading some uh, books, also some books on other concepts, including things like OpenStack and whatnot. So. I think that's probably the silver lining here is that I actually have more time to do more things and be more productive. Um, and for in terms of life hacks, um, I think I don't have much of a life hack to uh, give myself, but I think I could learn one to have a, you know, to learn how to cut my own hair this time because barber shops actually just got closed here. So it's going to be quite a while before I can get another haircut from them. <laughs> It seems like a common problem, like how to get a haircut. Yeah, it's, I, I just realized how I've never actually cut my own hair for quite a long time. So let's see how it goes. try that? <laughs> it's been a while. <laughs> well, it's, it's easy because when I watch the hairdresser, she's just doing like with the machine, like zzzz, and it's done. And when my wife tried, it's, it's very tricky. <laughs> yeah, the hairdressers make it look really simple. When I first um, tried to use those electric things um, to, to cut my boy's hair, and then I follow YouTube. So I watch it, and then while I'm follow I'm cutting, and I'm also following the YouTube. So it seems to be okay that there's some accident here and there, but then like it's better than um, keeping very long. <laughs> mm, yeah, because actually I was contemplating whether or not to cut my hair like um, about a week back, but I was like, maybe I could hold it off a bit longer. Because it wasn't that long, but now that it's shut for another month, I, I guess I have to learn eventually. Yeah, so I realized typically for this first time I had cutting, it's like a patch on top of the patch. So you a uh, little accident, you try to fix it, it makes things even worse. And then finally, all your hair will be gone towards the end. So Rifa, you have a, a, a long hair today? Yeah, def definitely growing out the hair right now. Uh -huh. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I guess the silver lining on that is that even if I bought the haircut, no one would be able to see it because everyone's telecom uh, teleconferencing now. <laughs> and, uh, I see. Well, thank you all for sharing this. It was great to learn a bit more about about each of us. And uh, I would like to go to the next uh, item on our agenda, and that's uh, sharing a short status update about our project. And I prepared a uh, short slide deck together with Diana. I will share the slide. Let me try again. Be fading a little bit. Okay. 
Can you see my PowerPoint? Yeah. Oh, cool. Try to do the presentation. Okay. Diana, maybe I will leave it up to you to start and then I'll take over for the last two slides, which I added myself, if you don't mind. Sure. So uh, if you go to the next one, so uh, maybe I'll just follow last time's format and to see um, uh, in terms of the number of PRs that we merged every month and then to compare um, what is our com community contribution. So um, it's something that we value a lot. So that's why we start to track that. And um, in a case that how we can get our community contribution more. Um, so I know, thank you everyone that who has um, contributed in the past or in this month. And so um, I think um, it, we are get, getting steady in terms of the number of PRs. And I think there are some that are still pending, for example, for S many through and um, some other important PRs that want to um, get that land. Um, so if you go to the next slide. Maybe then I'll just add one more uh, thought here. Uh, many of us in the core team are quite overwhelmed by the number of GitHub notifications we get and all the pull requests waiting for our review. So if you are waiting for a feedback from us and we don't get, get back to you in a few days or even a few weeks, then please uh, ping us on Slack. It's not that we are ignoring you, but it's just there are too many notifications coming in and sometimes things uh, fell through the cracks. Please do, please. If you are waiting for feedback, let us know on Slack. Your turn, Diana. Okay. So, um, so maybe I'll just get the very like high level what's happening, and uh, probably will leave the, some time for the team to go through um, what is what is happening in like on the piece of work. Um, so, as you know, April milestone it is happening. Um, so th this list, what is, um, what we are planning to do for April, there are some goals and also stretch goals that we, we hope to get to, but usually we try to keep the, uh, the goal relatively small so that we can commit to it. Um, and the 2nd things, and you probably noticed that we have opened up a Slack workspace to the public. Um, so I think it's everyone to also comment on, uh, helping the, the community for questions. And um, I think it will be it will be a good um, way for us to communicate to each other as well. Uh, in terms of uh, happen, what happened in March and also in this month so far, we're making good progress on the migration guide, and we would like to continue to do that so till we are done. Um, and the next point is, um, so I don't want to make it as a, a marketing thing, but I think we, we are also seeing more people approaching us to get their um, more loopback users approaching us to get their company logos highlighted on the website. And which means like they're actually using it and uh, for the recent ones, they're actually using it in production. Um, so you can also see there not only the, the, the logo on the right. And also, you can see the uh, um, the testimonial. So it also gives us an understanding that which piece of loopback they're using, or which one, which piece that they, they really appreciate on. Um, and uh, in terms of the planning in progress, uh, May is May milestone is in planning. Um, so feel free to take a look and chime in and to see which which one that you that is important to you. Uh, and also for the Q3 roadmap, we are just starting out. To plan um, with uh, Marisov and Raymond and the team. And so, what we hope is to put more emphasis on the documentation improvements. And I think that, that we got um, all kinds of different suggestions in how to do it. And I think it's, um, we should take the time to uh, in Q3 to, um, to tackle some of them and also the feature parity as well. So, maybe I'll pass it to. Um, to Marisov to see if you want to go around the team or you want to finish this live first. Oh, yeah, thank you. So I would like to highlight the recent work that Raymond and we were doing, uh, and that's about improving the way how we work inside Loopback Next Monorip. We have been following TypeScript project references for, I think, maybe almost two years by now. And it's a feature of TypeScript that allows uh, you to compose the monorepo from smaller TypeScript projects, and TypeScript is able to understand this structure. And finally, two days ago, Raymond landed the pull request, which, which enabled 
this feature in uh, Bug Next Monorepo. And as a result, we are seeing much, much faster build times, especially when you do incremental rebuild after making small changes as part of your development workflow. So just something to be aware of. And thank you to Raymond. And uh, in the past, we did a few other improvements. This is kind of like an ongoing process of looking for ways how to keep the time of installing dependencies, building solution, running tests, keep it reasonably fast. So I've listed a few of the changes we made in, in the past. And what also Raymond is working on together with Bone School, uh, Christopher Hiller, he's a maintainer of Mocha. So they are working together in um, implementing parallel test runner in Mocha so that you can utilize multiple file processes to run tests in parallel. And uh, they did a proof of concept, concept together, which confirmed there will be great speed, speed improvements when it landed. And currently we are waiting for Mocha to actually land the feature and make it publicly available. There are three pull requests open if you are interested in this feature, or maybe you can help us to get it reviewed sooner, then feel free to join the discussion. Raymond, do you have anything to add? Uh, so uh, we're spending quite a bit of time trying to improve the productivity for all maintainers as well as developers. So that's why you're seeing these efforts here. And in addition to this, we're kind of uh, adding uh, quite a few uh, scripts or so, uh, LB command line tool. Um, two examples is first we had a LB4 copyright uh, command, which uh, help us maintain the file headers and the license um, you know, description, um, not only just for one single project, but also allow the Lena management model report to be updated in one shot. So that's one. Second one, we are adding an internal script, which allows you to quickly create a new uh, loopback for package within the model repo. Uh, we used to just copy paste and uh, have a lot of, you know, hiccups, um, especially when it comes to release the, the module. So this internal script will combine a few steps together to help you to bring, uh, create a new module, either as an extension or as a core package. Uh, so uh, we, we are really trying to smooth the edge for our maintainers and uh, developers to be more uh, productive and be more automated um, to you know, get things going. Thanks, Raymond, for the additional uh, additional perspective on this. I like the word productivity. That's what we are trying to improve all the time. And that's more, more or less all from me. The last slide I have for you is the, the date and time for the next maintainer's call. I'm trying to organize these calls every four weeks, typically every month, but then sometimes it will be every five weeks because we're running to our bi-weekly scheduled meetings. So in four weeks, uh, on May 21st. I hope to meet you all again virtually. And I'll post a, a, a comment on GitHub to let everybody know if uh, that went well. That's all for the slide deck. Are there any questions or comments or insight from anybody else on the information shared here? So far, congratulations for the improvement of, of this of this life cycle in the development. That's, that was good. Hi, Saf. I think you're on mute. Yep. So, are we going to go around and kind of share some of the work we have been doing recently? Yeah, yes, please. Let's do it. That was the last part. On my <coughs> okay, so I, I can start to uh, inspire you guys. Uh, so, recently, I'm kind of working on two areas. One is to improve the open API top-down approach, meaning if you have uh, open API spec describing your REST APIs and how can we take that open API spec and create the loopback implementation as well as the client code to access the um, API endpoints that are conforming to the REST API spec. Uh, we already have the ability to do the service side uh, 
you know, skeleton generation, basically looking at the signature from the open API spike and uh, uh, generate the controllers, models, type square types to describe the whole infrastructure. Right? And recently I enhanced that command to allow the so-called client mode, meaning if you already have an external web service and you want to connect to that web services uh, using open API spec. So we used to promote uh, the RAS connector um, for that purpose, but for REST connector, it's a bit tedious because you have to describe all the functional templates to describe how your uh, input output will look like. Uh, but if you already have a Swagger spec or Open API spec, uh, we made it easy now. Um, first of all, at one time, we have the so-called service proxy working together with uh, Open API Connect, right? Um, then the latest improvement is uh, we can now use the LB4 Open API dash dash client, which will generate uh, not only just the models as the strongly typed um, schema representation, but also generate the client code with all the strongly typed uh, methods. Uh, so very much uh, you are calling JavaScript or TypeScript APIs against your uh, REST endpoints uh, once you have the Open API spec available. Um, and we are also making some improvements to make sure that Open API metadata uh, will be populated as part of the declarations. So uh, when you open up the API explorer, you will see a lot of similarity as you just open up the um, Open API spec editor. Uh, so that's one area I've been working on. And the second area is uh, we're getting quite a bit requests from the community about uh, what if I have uh, existing Express middleware, how can I leverage the Express middleware in the loopback, uh, you know, uh, request response processing uh, chain. Right? So I did a, a proof of concept. Um, not really a proof of concept per se, because um, the PR is uh, ready for review with good test coverage, with uh, good documentation. So we are just debating like where to draw the line, like uh, what is enough and uh, what's the best uh, usage trends we can give to uh, not only just the uh, back users, but also existing uh, express community. Right? And also looking at the different perspectives, uh, what are the common simplest uh, use cases versus uh, the more advanced, like uh, 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 extensibility, um, you know, how to make a, a contribution and a how to align that with the uh, look back for uh, dependency injection uh, ideas. So we are having some interesting discussions there. Please feel free to join in. So hopefully we can settle on something and we can let the future uh, of course, like in open source, we don't have to be perfect for the first child. Right? Um, we can get something useful uh, to uh, the community first, then we can improve it over time. So this is an, another interesting PI. I will invite you to provide more feedback there. Yeah, so that's uh, the major things that I've been working on. Thank you, Ivan. Go next. Any volunteer? I will volunteer. Um, so I wasn't able to do as much contribution in the last month as I would have liked, mostly due to just the effects on our uh, the, the the business that I work for. Um, but I did create one issue for further investigation. Uh, I was looking into extending the OAS response decorators. Uh, in such a way that we could possibly automatically infer response codes, um, either in sequence or through some other mechanism. Um, I've started that investigation. I haven't gotten very far. I would love a lot of help from people who are probably more experienced in using loopback. Um, the other thing that I've been working on is I proposed a couple of extensions, uh, one to support Mongoose and one to support Typegoose. Um, again, I work for a business. Um, they have something like 350 existing types of Goose and Mongoose models. And, um, you know, being able to 
build up a new API service using loopback is going to require us being able to use those models. Uh, so I've been trying to find a good pattern for actually integrating with Mongoose and TypeGoose. And I've tried a couple of things. They're both kind of messy. So I, I put the pull requests together. I put them up. I would love to get feedback from people. Uh, specifically, I'd love to try and get some feedback from people who use Mongoose and Typegoose and see how they feel about the usage patterns that I've sort of put together. Uh, because what I, I don't want to do is sort of make my own personal opinionated assumptions. Um, beyond that, uh, I have another busy work month. <laughs> Yeah, to echo on that, I definitely think these uh, extensions will be really useful for the loopback community. And uh, we are kind of coming to a conclusion. We don't have to force everybody to really use our uh, OIM. Um, so we are kind of opening up the door so that uh, whoever likes their own, like, you know, ODM, OIM, should find a very uh, elegant way to plug into loopback. So we can get the best of break from both sides. Um, so having this kind of PRs coming in and the getting feedback from that community, it's really helpful. Um, so hopefully uh, we can improve the type OM integration. We can improve the, the type goose, mongoose integration. So we can settle on um, certain interesting patterns for other uh, OIMs to, to follow. Uh, so I'm seeing very good, you know, uh, in, uh, potential there. So let's just uh, make it happen. So Matt, do you want to pick the next one? Uh, sure. Um, Mario, can you tell us what you're working on? Ah, I, I spoke a lot at the beginning. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, what are you working on, uh, like in these days, uh, Mario, or maybe in the next months? To keep it like focused more on the present. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Ba basically, um, we 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 had to we because we started uh, our our project, our main project, since the very beginning in the loop. Back, or remember that. Um, it was it was quite a long time. Uh, we were we were experiencing in, in migrating as new features are coming along with the with the project, and so. But right now, I believe that, for example, for for the things that we were working, uh, the the framework was very stable, and and I'm really happy for its performance. Um, right now, uh, our company, our company is is basically working on different projects. Uh, that are related to, to integration mobile apps. One of them, the, the last one that we just uh, actually won, uh, is a project for the local government. Uh, is 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 a, a mobile application that we generate uh, electronic invoices. So currently, the government is is allowing people to actually generate electronic invoices to different providers, and also they have. A, a website. It's a web application that a third party did. Uh, then uh, I was I was basically uh, required to to analyze the infrastructure, and and I saw, for example, a a, a good potential uh, in the same architecture that we were working for the bank or for the financial industry. So Lubac Lubac Four is is in our proposal. We, this is a common project. It's in the middle. Uh, by managing the microservices and manager manage, managing the layer that connects to the mobile application that will generate will allow uh, contributors in the country to generate uh, electronic invoices. But then the the main role of Loopback Four is to have in the middle to be set in the middle and still communicate with again uh, SOAP XML services that are legacy Java uh, web services that the government has for all this purpose. Um, I think, and I believe that the first web application that they build is is in Java, also in JSP and all that. Very old technology, very old. So with all these things that I acquired and I learned from the Lubac team and from the Lubac framework itself, it was very easy to implement and imagine, for example, this layer in the middle, and 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 give me all the functionality that not only translates, right? Not only translate the calls from the mobile application, but also it generates logs, it, man it manages the authentication, the lifecycle of the tokens and everything. And I believe that 
that is basically the, the substantial substantial uh, feature that I love from Lookback for because it's not a framework that that ties me to to a specific uh, things. I can I can as Raymond said and as Matt said, uh, uh, it's really composable. So I can I can like a label. I can I can plug in things. Once you understand that part, uh, it's really very easy for an archi architecture point of view to design systems like that. So that is an, a, a, a something in the, in the future. Right now, we have uh, more or less around 15 uh, software developers that uh, are, are more or less uh, uh, experienced in look back. In look back. Uh, I, I train them and, and I have been given some, some, some feedback and they're more or less monitoring uh, the, 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 the repositories and, and everything. So they are expert right now in Node.js and the look back for uh, so that is really a gift uh, from from the Lubac framework to my company in this case. Um, uh, but past projects are financial. I am I, I was really stuck with this uh, mobile integration and online banking for the financial. Uh, and in something in the middle is Dr. Henry, which is a health service application that we are going to donate to the community. It's going to be a really a free service where doctors can actually engage and they provide free services to remote, very, very poor uh, communities uh, in my country. Uh, and, and it's gonna be powered also by Luba for that, but that, that is uh, in the sense of the, an NGO sense, right? Um, uh, aside from that, uh, this is, this is, these are the things I, I sent, I sent uh, Diana Lowe, Diane in, in Bachstos, uh, the, the uh, URL, uh, it's a it's a mock-up of the of the banking services and the mobile app uh, that connects, for example, to, to the look back for, and 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 you can you can disclosure right. So we put a logo. That's not the bank, of course, that we work in. Some mock-up bank that we just pick randomly, and and you can see, for example, the account summary and everything. Everything is is being served in the in the in the look back for. Mario, I have a question for you. Tell me. I remember you deployed your project a while back, a year ago or something. Look back for project. Was it a year ago? Yeah, the, the, the what? My what? Yeah, one of your projects was deployed in look back for uh, a year or so ago, right? Oh, Someone said. Aha, uh -huh, yeah. correct, exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, uh, do you keep updating the framework? Definitely. Like, for example, like the, the, the last change that uh, Raymond helped us remember the TypeScript thing with the .json and, and the data source configurations, we immediately. So the, the immediately we, we roll out and, and we actually, we have like uh, the developers, the, the developer environment, the machines, local machine, the develop, a developer environment, a dev environment, and we have um, a regression environment and the lab environment. So we 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 have the programmers actually monitoring and and basically there is the development which is the the, the one that is being uh, updated and trying to keep up uh, with the latest uh, look back for technology you know that that we uh, published. However, uh, the the regression in the live takes more time. Uh, it's probably taking uh, thirty days more or less to go again to the to the to the regression, and then it could possibly take another thirty days to go to live. Uh, that is in terms of cha change, changing and keeping up with the with the framework. And and there were many other things that we built without uh, having the look back for framework uh, involved. Like for example, uh, uploading uh, attached files in the in the messages that we the customer sent to the bank. For example, we are we are allowing. The, the, the customers to attach a, a file. Uh, that was, for example, uh, done uh, inside the loopback framework, but we, we actually uh, had a, a, an, an express uh, mounted uh, endpoint into that. Now, for example, because of the latest changes uh, that Raymond, Raymond introduced and his POC, then we were able to actually change that and, and, and it's being managed fully right now with the framework. So we are keeping up we're trying to keep up with because we understand that if we don't do that, then in six 
or eight months, uh, the, the microservice is really out of date with the code. So not only in terms of uh, trying to keep up with the look back for framework, but also in terms of the consistency and the and probably some improve, improvements in performance, for example. But that, that's one of the challenges, but it's really worth it. Yeah, that's good to know. I can go. Uh, this is Dominic. Um, I'm on the loop team. And uh, uh, last month, you know, I worked on a lot of uh, migration uh, documents, uh, pretty much uh, how to move from LB3 mixins to LB4 mixins, uh, how to take custom models, custom remote, uh, custom methods custom on models in LB3 and custom remote methods, and, you know, how to, uh, to accomplish that in LB4. Uh, and the recent one I'm working on this month was just uh, the uh, difference in uh, CLI commands, like what commands are similar for LB3 to LB4, which ones were only unique to LB3, uh, and um, if there, you know, if there's a workaround to do it in LB4, uh, and uh, which commands are in LB4 but were never in LB3, and these are mainly new concepts like interceptors, observers. So uh, that's what I've been working on. That's it for me. Tom, I think you are also helping, you know, charging issues coming to the uh, web services area and uh, it's some of the issues. Um, so that's a good validation. Uh, Mario, like a lot of, you know, backend integration actually involves uh, soap web services uh, from many years ago. So. We should continue to make sure uh, we can improve the productivity there. Definitely, yeah. Definitely. So I choose uh, Agnes. Oh hi. Um. So. Um. So like um, as Tom just mentioned, so we have like a rotating interrupt row, and. I am the person this month, so I basically just handle those incoming issues from the community, like um, answering questions and fixing random bugs. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and so that's what I do. And um, I'll pick Diana. Yeah, so Agnes, one, one thing you forgot to mention is you are also helping to globalize the can command line tools uh, by utilizing strong globalize. Uh, so that's kind of the requirement from uh, large companies like IBM to allow uh, globalization and the localization of the product offering. But I think in general, it will help the community as well. And we are getting, um, you know, translations uh, from, um, we, we, we kind of utilize the IBM Watson translation service to do the uh, message translation. And from the documentation perspective, we also get translations from the community. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah so the other thing to add. Yeah, so the other thing to add is, um, so we have the rotating interrupt role so that like within the team, we are sort of interrupting. Uh, we are picking one person for each month to um, mostly to triage the community issues or there's any uh, bug fixes that we we should fix it um, right away instead of waiting to the next planning iteration um, so so that's we can keep the rest of the team focus on their uh, their task so um, this role is, has been pretty good help for us to in order to like for us to maintain the the things that we want to do and also to help the community. Uh, so I know that we are out of time, so maybe I will just quickly um, mention what I did. Uh, actually, I did it last night. Um, so some time ago, Raymond mentioned that, um, or actually some other feedback that we got is the, um, the the docs is a little bit hard to navigate sometimes. And so also the comments also from Reefer. Um, so last night I created um, uh, like, um, 
a sample sidebar kind of thing and so that like taking it from like outside the box instead of trying to uh, change what we have but then like think about for the user scenario um what uh, what are needed for people developing loopback or people who are um, deploying uh, loopback to other cloud providers or some other places then um so and then i'm trying to work on a, a sample um sidebar um, so this is what I was working on last night. It's pretty fun. <laughs> um, so, so maybe uh, I would like to go next. It's getting late for me. Sorry. I would like to go next. It's getting late for me. Okay, sure. All right. So I've been working on the migration guide um, since uh, the architecture has changed a lot in Lubeck four compared to Lubeck three. Um, I've landed the, the documentation regarding the differences in the request response cycle in loopback three and four. And uh, currently I am working on the differences in the booting process in loopback three and four. It's open for review. Uh, community contributors, if you will also like to take a look at that, you can. You can share the, the, the link. Yep. I'm just posting it here. There you go. Great. Yeah, Pastor. Um, maybe maybe uh, I'll meet the next person, uh, unless uh, Miroslav is going to close the call. So we still have refine and Jenny, right? Yeah. Um, maybe I can go next. Uh, so uh, recently I'm still working on the um, Open API related and uh, authorization related features, but uh, I think they are relatively uh, small. Uh, fixes or um, features and um, yeah and uh, another uh, interesting story I just uh, started to work on is uh, customizing the API Explorer the theme of the API Explorer and um, yeah I just submitted a draft PR <clears throat> to demo how to do it. I think that's, that could be an interesting uh, task. Maybe, yeah, um, that's pretty much everything <laughs> from me. Yeah, you probably forgot you mentioned uh, that you introduced the uh, DWP extension. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. 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 That's, yeah, yeah, that's actually, yeah, um, the, the core code exists there for a very long time, but recently we extracted it into a standalone extension package and yeah, just easy for people to uh, plug into their application. Yeah, thanks, Raven. And Rifa? Okay, so um, for the most part, I, don't, I haven't been able to contribute back to Loopback as much as I wanted to. Uh, for other than in terms of, you know, um, going into discussions and providing some of my viewpoints. But uh, what I have also done is actually um, tried to do uh, increase my community outreach as, you know, any good uh, uh, force uh, of any good open source project would thrive under a good, uh, under a good community, one that is engaged well. So been trying to uh, answer some queries on like uh, stack exchange and what and uh, slack channel and also on some of the github issues but at the same time i like my wife diana has mentioned i'm also exploring and how we can restructure our documentation to be a lot more um uh, user friendly for the new for new users and have, you know, have more streamlined flow that makes more sense and it's less um obscured for the uh, for the users who are reading the documentation and also, I'm uh, trying to explore 
different areas of loopback that we can improve that are not uh, necessarily um, you know uh, that are not necessarily the high high exposure areas such as you know adding HTTP to support to the HTTP server and uh, also and some of the other uh, packages as um, to add some some minor improvements and whatnot. I'm also exploring on how we can, um, you know, create a deployment guide for CNCF build packs using the Paketo build packs. I don't know if you've seen the GitHub issue I opened recently yesterday, because um, there's been a shift in the, um, the the Heroku and Cloud Foundry Foundation to move away from their proprietary build packs to the more open and standardized cloud native build packs version three. So those are the areas that I'm currently exploring, and I to be able to uh, do something in that area. Yeah, that would be fantastic. All right, that's great. Uh, that's uh, all from me. Rifa, thanks for being so active on Slack and Gitter and helping community users questions. I think that's an uh, area that um, is very important, especially with other open as compared to other open source projects. I think Lubeck could benefit from uh, increased uh, community engagement. So you know, because we don't have as much uh, as large of a community, so we can't really leverage as much of the community to help themselves. So I think we need to be a, a bit more proactive in helping those with those kind of queries. I tried to take a look at the new questions posted on Stack Overflow from time to time, but not as frequently as I would like to. Yeah, I so uh, that was. There. Yeah, so uh, that's why I actually posted in. Uh, I just dropped in the suggestion on the Slack back maintainer Slack channel. On uh, you, one of them was to use the uh, RSS feed from Stack out Stack Overflow so that could get some notifications on that so then you know, we have yeah, you know we're actually notified about any questions posted on stack overflow and it can uh, potentially answer it where possible anybody else Wishing to share or have any chance to speak? Okay, if we are all good, but I'd like to I'd like to thank you for joining our call today, and see you in a month. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, thank you. Friends, stay healthy. And keep the good working. The good job working. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. Bye. Take care.